Everyone using Lightroom's masking tools is familiar with this problem. I want to make the background darker without affecting the subject, therefore I have created this mask. So what happens if I bring down the exposure? I'm making the background darker, but we can also notice this mask is far from perfect with those super distracting white lines around finer details. So in this video, let me show you a way of getting rid of these white lines. As always, I'm going to show the whole editing process from start to finish. So if you're just here for the masking part, make sure to check the chapters. And also, if you want to follow along, you can find this raw file in the description of the video. And now, let's begin. So that's our raw file. First, I want to crop it because the focus needs to be more on the subject. So I'm going to turn this into a portrait mode photo, keeping the bird nicely centered like this. All right, then, of course, there are way too many tree branches and those are super distracting as well. So we want to get rid of them. Go ahead, open up the remove tool. Here we want to choose the remove mode. Make sure to use generative AI and then we need to brush over all the branches we want to remove. So let's start with the easier ones. Lightroom shouldn't have a problem removing those. It's always better to clean up things like these at the start of the editing process in order to get better results. Also, I'm not cleaning up everything at once. I'm going to select those finer tree branches first and now let's click on remove to clean them up first. Doing this, Lightroom will have an easier time getting rid of the bigger tree branches later on. So that's looking good already. Now we can continue with the bigger parts. All right, looks much cleaner. Now, since we have cropped the image quite a bit and I shot this at a rather high ISO, what I wanna do next is to apply some denoising to prevent any noise issues. So let's go ahead, open up the details panel and just click on denoise. Perfect. All right, the setup for this shot was a little bit much, but it's really worth it. Now we can start with the cool things. Let's go ahead, open up the basic adjustments and let's start with working on the exposure. I'm going to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard to lessen the overall contrast because I want to have more control over that. Then. I want to make the whole base image a lot darker. I'm going to start this by bringing down the exposure very gently. I'm also going to bring down the highlights, which will mostly affect the background. And for the base image, I want the background to be super, super dark, almost like this gray color tone we have right here, because we will be applying a lot of masking later on to fix the background. So having it dark like this is a really good help. Then let me bring up the shadows, which will mostly affect the subject. I'm also going to bring up the blacks again, just to make the subject brighter, giving it some more details to look at. All right, nice. With the exposure adjustments out of the way, we do have a better idea of what the image looks like. That means I can now decide on the white balance. I think it's still a little bit too cold. You can see the head of the bird has this kind of blue color cast. So I want to fix that by bringing up the temperature, kind of fixing it that way. Let's see, I think there's a little bit too much green in this image. So I'm going to bring up the tint to reduce the overall green tones as well. Okay. And then I'm going to bring down the vibrance a little bit to reduce the overall saturation. Okay, nice. Of course, I want this image to look sharp and clean. So I'm going to bring up the texture I'm going to bring up the clarity and I'm even going to increase the dehaze. All right, and there we have the base adjustment. So let's compare to before real quick. You can see a huge difference thanks to cleaning up this image. Also, the whole shot looks a lot darker with way less contrast. That's exactly what I want because now we're going to apply masking to this shot and we're going to transform it quite heavily. So let's open up the masking panel. The very first thing I want to do I want to make the background look a lot colder, giving this whole shot a lot of color contrast. There are a bunch of different ways how we can target the background. We could use a simple background mask. However, in my experience, this does not work that well. What I'm going to do is to use a range mask. To be more precise, I'm going to use a color range mask because the background is a very uniform color. So I'm going to just click in here and you can see we are getting a pretty good selection. I'm going to even bring up the refine tool right here to make this selection more precise. And at the same time, we need to subtract from this mask because at the moment we are still affecting the subject right here. So I'm going to subtract a subject mask. Now that's looking good at a first glance. 
let's see what this will do. I'm going to bring down the temperature, introducing a lot more cold colors to this scene. Still, everything looks fine, but now I also want to make the whole background a little bit darker. So let's bring down the exposure and see what happens. I'm going to drop it a little more than I would usually do, so you can see the problem with the mask around the subject, creating this super annoying white line, which you want to get rid of. Let me dial back down the exposure. I don't want to go too dark with the first mask, but let's activate the overlay right here and fix the mask first. Let's zoom in in here. I'm going to hit Control Shift and I'm going to zoom in in here. Now, thanks to the overlay, we can see the problem. How can we fix that? The good news is that's rather simple. The bad news is it will take a lot of time. So we're going to add and we're going to add a brush mask. Here, make sure to auto mask. That means if you brush over an area, Lightroom will try to automatically select all the similar areas. I'm also going to pull down the flow a little bit just to make the brush less strong, kind of. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to brush along this fringe line right here. I might want to zoom in even more for that and I'm going to just work my way around the subject. Also the area between those feathers right here isn't properly selected as well. So what I'm doing here is to just roughly brush over it to select everything in here. One thing you notice is and those lines have a different color. On the right we have some yellow tones, on the left side we have a blue tone. That is chromatic aberration. So we can make this a little more precise by removing chromatic aberration. I should have done this earlier, but I simply forgot that. So let's quickly head out of the masking menu. I'm going down into the lens correction tab and here we want to check remove chromatic aberration. And once I activate it, look what this does. Those fine lines are pretty much gone. So this will make it easier for us to work with these masks. I'm going back into my mask and I'm going to click on the brush mask. Let's again activate the overlay and I'm simply continuing my way removing areas here. So you might still see some white gaps in here. We want to fill these, but that's not possible with the auto mask setting activated. You will see I'm just selecting more of the feather than I'm selecting those white areas. That means I'm going to deselect auto mask and then I'm just going to continue brushing in in those areas. And if you're overlapping the feathers a little bit like in this case, I don't think that matters much. It's better to overlap a little bit than have these white lines visible. I'm also going to brush along the tree branch because as you can see there is also a white line around it. Lightroom just isn't as precise with those finer details. That should be enough to make this mask a lot more precise. So that's looking good. It was a lot of work, but we don't have to do this work again. We can use this mask we just created and just duplicate it for other masks. What I'm going to do next, right click on the mask and choose duplicate mask one. This creates another copy of it, of course, with the same settings. So I'm going to reset those. What I want to do next is to make the background a little bit darker without affecting the top left corner. I want to have some kind of light effect coming in from that area. So on this mask, I'm going to, I'm going to subtract a linear gradient and I'm taking out a big chunk of the top left side like this. And then what I'm going to do next is to heavily drop the exposure within the rest of this area. So let's bring down the exposure, making everything a lot darker. Making areas darker like this will also reveal some more finer issues down below. So again, we might need to zoom in a bit to clean up the mask further. Again, I'm just using the brush here and I'm just making sure everything here is selected to avoid these white lines. All right, that's looking better. Let me also increase the contrast within this mask a little bit like that. Okay, nice. There's another thing we can do to make these problematic areas a little less obvious. I'm going to use a new mask. I'm going to create a linear gradient with which I'm going to cover the bottom part like this. I'm overlapping the bird itself to blend the background and the bird a little more smoothly. So I'm going to bring down the exposure once more, further making the bottom part of the image darker and creating this shadowy effect at the bottom part. I want to add yet another linear gradient 
and again just bring down the exposure, making it even darker. So I think that's looking pretty nice. Now what about the light coming in from the top left? How can we do that? I'm going to start with a new mask. I'm going to choose a radial gradient. Let's make it nice and big. Of course, we want to rotate it to give the light some direction. I'm going to place the center of this radial gradient right outside the image. And let's make it a little bit bigger still. We are overlapping the subject. Of course, we don't want that. So what I'm going to do is to subtract a subject mask to get rid of that. And then I'm going to bring up the exposure, adding this light effect. I'm going to raise the exposure quite a bit to make it really dramatic. I'm also going to bring up the whites, making it even brighter. And let's also raise the blacks. Wonderful, that's looking really, really good. Of course, since we have created this light effect, now the subject looks a little bit unnatural because we are missing some light on it. So let's create a new subject mask. Then I only want to affect the area that gets hit by the light. So let me intersect this mask by clicking on those three dots. Here we're gonna choose intersect mask width and choose a radial gradient. Now I'm going to draw up a radial gradient and I'm trying to target just the top left side of the bird like this. This is the area which I want to make brighter. So again we are going to start by bringing up the exposure. Then I'm also going to bring up the contrast just to give the bird some more punch. Let me bring up the highlights. I'm also going to bring up the shadows, making the darker parts just a little bit brighter. And I'm going to bring up the whites. Okay, I think we could also add a bit of clarity, just like that. Now we don't have to worry much about those white lines within this mask because we are working on brighter areas. So those white lines will be less obvious. That's why I don't clean up this part. There's one more thing we can do to create a really impactful image and that's a tiny, tiny mask. Let me create a new brush. Let's set the brush feather all the way down to zero to get a hard brush. Now I'm zooming in, I'm gonna target the eye and I'm just going to brush over it. What I'm going to do is to make the eye pop. I'm going to use a lot of contrast, so let's pump it up here. I'm going to bring up the whites all the way, which will make the eye look a lot more piercing. And I'm also going to bring up the temperature, giving it a more natural yellow look. And let me bring up the saturation, just a bit like this. And we can also use some texture and some clarity to really make it pop. All right, that's looking great. I'm still not happy with the darkening at the bottom part. Let me use one more mask. I'm going to choose a radial gradient, a nice big one like that. Again, I'm going to place it in a way so it comes down from the top left corner. This time, however, I'm going to invert it. So let's click that invert checkbox right here. And within this mask, I'm going to bring down the highlights just a little bit. I'm also going to bring down the whites a bit. And I think that's it for the masking adjustments. So let me turn off all those masks to see the difference from before, from our flat base image to after. Looking much, much better. Next up, we wanna do a little bit of color grading. So let's go ahead, open up the color mixer. Here, I wanna work on the saturation first. I want to make the bird a little more vibrant. So I'm going to target the orange tones and just bring them up. I'm also going to bring up the yellow tones. And let's also bring up the blue tones. I quite like them in this image. So I wanna make them a bit more saturated. Okay, nice. We can also use the luminance to bring in some more contrast. Here, let me bring up the orange luminance, which will target the bird basically and make it brighter. Then I'm going to slightly bring down the yellow luminance, which will make the bird's beak a little bit darker and less shiny. All right, and let's see, maybe I'm even bringing up the blue luminance a bit just to make the background a little bit brighter. That's it for the color mixer. Then there is one more thing I wanna do in the calibration tab. I wanna bring down the blue primary hue and I wanna pump up the saturation because I like this effect. Now the only thing left to do is the sharpening in the details panel. So what we are going to do in here is to bring down the radius all the way. Then we're going to bring up the details all the way up and of course we want to apply some masking. Hold down the Alt key while adjusting the masking slider. So you can see we can nicely target the subject like this and then bring up the amount of sharpening and we are done 
editing this image using only Lightroom. So I hope this will help you creating more precise masks for your images. Let me know if you have any questions left. If you want to support this channel, make sure to like, maybe leave a comment and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and see you all next time.